your pre order in. I, I think that there I is <laughs> there there is a um I think a misreading or a miswriting in that. I think it's they smell like fried chicken and feet. That's disgusting. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, how long do you walk in that until it just like reeks? And you're like, well, now I can't eat fried chicken because all it smells like is feet now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm just wanting to know what the guy is thinking when he comes home and he takes his shoes off and puts them up to his face. Right? <laughs> just that. I mean, what do you do? I mean, I got shoes that smell like fried chicken. Do I get up every morning and I eat them? And, or do I wake up in the morning with my shoes next to the bed and go, hmm, mm. fried chicken? Right. Right. I mean, what's the deal with right. That, right? I feel That's like. Pretty, I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I feel like now I I would have shoes that just made me fat. <laughs> like, I'd be like, well, now I <laughs> want fried chicken. I got to have fried chicken all the time. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, you know, what's interesting about it, though, from a business model, it's actually very fascinating because, I mean, when you said that, it's like what they did is they mashed two things that would never go together. Yeah. Yeah, Right. They they basically mash. And that's the world we live in from a business point of view, you know, is basically mashing things together. That's what we do with with think is like looking at things that have been popular other ways and mashing multiple things together to create something new. And there's no question a shoe that smells like chicken is definitely something new. Nah, and, sure. you know, there's always like, there's a, what is it? Uh, uh, P.T. Barnum said, there's always a, there's a sucker out there. <laughs> yeah. There's a sucker born every moment. Yeah. Right? Sucker born every so minute. Fascinating. They sold those out. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I, crazy I, I would imagine it would be like the deep South, right? Like lots of people who love fried yeah. chicken. Um, so what would I you... want to know who the guy that thought about that in the ad agency right? that walked right? in and said, hey, I got an idea. I got something that's <laughs> going to blow your mind. You're not going to believe this. It's going to be the best thing for your brand. We're going to sell tons of them. In the chicken. <laughs> we're going to blow up your brand, right? Yeah. We're going to take a shoe and make it smell like a chicken, and we're going to get crocs. I mean, that's crazy. See, I, think of that? I completely see it the other way around. I see it that some guy got oh. extremely high and was staring at his feet for more than five minutes. It was like, oh, man, these shoes are so comfortable. Damn, now I feel like chicken. Chicken <laughs> shoes, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> oh, or, or, or the guy that was working in, inside, works at KFC, yep. was wearing his Crocs and then took them home and smelled them and said, ah, Jesus, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to go sell this to them. Ah, good idea. Either way, there is, smelling shoes. There is one lazy person out there who's made a lot of money out of this <laughs> crazy the pet rock we reinvented right yep exactly <laughs> i love it so crazy. disgusting yeah <laughs> all right um so for the uh for the next thing in 2020 who had zombie bugs anybody have that one oh, no great. okay yeah nope. all zombie, right zombie bugs yep yep exactly hmm. so the don't newest... know those what is well, the newest thing, actually, uh, scientists have discovered zombie cicadas in uh, in by, by basically in uh, West Virginia. So what has uh. happened is there's this breed of, of cicada that has gone into some type of um, uh, like a spore and it has uh, uh-huh. basically affected the bug to the point where parts of the bug will fall off and it will continue to survive where it could actually survive like without like 90% of its body and, and continue living. Uh, they've got pictures wow. of like this bug that is like missing chunks of it. And uh, what happens is the spore actually makes the, uh, or I think it's a fungus, the spore come from a fungus. And um, it then makes the males uh, kind of do this, this breeding thing, this breeding dance or, or thing with its wings that attracts more males. And then they continue to, uh, uh, transfer the, this, the spore across. And, uh, yeah, now huh. there's these bugs that are, are still effective and, and diseased and falling apart as they're continue to live. Wow. So, yeah. That's, that's that some, is terrifying. That's some wacky science. Yeah. Right. That's some wacky, uh, wacky nature, nature, man. That, that is one powerful thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was speaking to someone wow. the other day about, uh, you know, how our things are going. And, and yeah, with the way things are going with this pandemic, um, how uh, mm-hmm. things are kind of like becoming more remote. People are staying from home. I work from home. Matt works from home. Uh, you know, I, I had picked up uh, an Oculus uh, virtual reality system thing because I was thinking, you know, the, it's going to be Ready Player One in, in no time where where everybody is oh, yeah. now working and socializing through VR the way things are going, like if things can't somehow clean up and, and stop spreading this, uh, this pandemic, like it, it's just, um, 
you're going to be living in VR. So, you know, then it made me think when I saw this article, well, maybe Walking Dead isn't that far off. It starts with the bugs and it moves to everything else. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Well, yeah, there's no question. Like what we've seen uh, in just the last, we saw basically five years go by in four months. Yeah. In technology. We've seen this massive shift. We always knew, you know, I'm a, I'm a technologist and I've always, we, you know, all of us in the community, we know that we're moving towards what we call hives, which is the, is the concept of groups. Mm-hmm. You know, today in the business, if you want to survive, you've got to build a hive. You got, you know, everybody's moving into these, this now world of where we're using Zoom, you know, and it's mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. very interesting that, you know, people are walking around. I'll like sit around. I'll be watering my backyard, and I got three of my friends or four of my friends on Facetime. One of them's cooking, another one's hanging out, and everybody sort of hangs out. And what I was finding was, is it was pretty satisfying. Yep. You know, it wasn't. You know, it was more like, wow, we're actually hanging out and a little bit, even though we're not together. So I think you're seeing so much of that now. That change. We're moving into that world now. You see Facebook and Twitter and. Uh, Google all saying you're going to stay, you can stay home and work from home now. Yeah. So we're, we, you know, we're moving into the Jetson age. We got like, you know, it was like what I call, you know, BC before COVID now going into AC, uh, <laughs> everything has shifted. Yep. You know, this is a whole new planet that we're at and the way the way we're going to operate is just totally different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the big three drivers that changed everything, bandwidth, storage and horsepower, uh, you know, and look at us. We're on a, you know, talking, you got a worldwide broadcast network in the palm of your hand. Yep. Exactly. Right. Which is crazy. So this is all moving. You know, we're moving into this world and this definitely pandemic has changed everything in that sense. And we're going to see all types of new business models and things coming out of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No doubt. You know, I, I often tell uh, Matt, uh, because of my age, uh, you know, I've seen that incline and rise of technology. And I can only imagine with, with yourself, uh, I mean, you've been a part of so many different ventures, uh, you know, even with the uh, the audio video well, post-production scene. And, uh, and and I think you were even in uh, like the, the video game industry, weren't you, with like a inter- interactive cd rom yeah yeah so i mean yeah i yeah I, I started a company called seventh level uh back in the day along with bob ezrin who was you know produced all the pink floyd stuff you know major record producer we started this company mm-hmm. and i actually my one of my favorite things and the thing i'm most proud of is i myself along with a guy named richard merrick we uh, designed directed and produced the world's first interactive cartoon so I've been dealing with technology back when it was Windows 386, 25 megahertz machines, like right? really with the four meg of RAM when we were having to build programs where with four meg of RAM, you could basically, you know, Windows would eat up two and a half meg. You'd have one and a half meg to create, you know, create imagery and all that. We had to come up with all kinds of tricky ways to, you know, build engines that we use for usable animations and all types of stuff. But yeah, I've been around through the whole technology space because, you know, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. I remember the day when I, you know, got my driver's license in high school and, mm-hmm. my, you know, my mom said, okay, I got my car, drove away and there was no cell phones. Nope. There was no anything, right? Yeah. So you just were, you were free. Yeah, yeah. And I just started realizing how incredible to have been able to have experienced a time where that was like really true freedom because mm-hmm. we weren't connected. Right. You know, now we have the machine, basically. And I believe what's happening now is man is clearly merging with the machine. Yes. It's starting out with us holding it in our hand. It goes everywhere with us. We refer to it. We're watching it. We're connected to it. It's talking to us all day long. And now, you know, they're starting experiments with putting chips in people. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's, we are moving towards that world of singularity that, you know, uh, Kurzweil had always talked about yep. where the machine and the man is merging. And I think we're seeing that now accelerated at an extraordinary yep. pace. And it's funny that you're bringing so, that yeah, up it's because someone had uh, I've actually seen a lot of articles reading about how this covid pandemic was actually created, it was man made created so that Bill Gates could chip us all. <laughs> well, <there's no> <laughs> it's an no, article. Look, it is. No, no. Remember, if you go back, if you go search the web right now, go, you know, Google, you know, go to YouTube mm-hmm. and talk, go look for Ted, uh, from Ted Talks, Bill Gates talking about vaccination. He talks about that. Yep. He actually talks. I mean, this is like five, six, seven, eight years ago. He's been talking about it. Remember, he's a futurist and he sees where a lot of these things are going. And there's no question that, you know, we've got nanotechnologies now that are like small that can be put into vaccinations and, you know, they can put these little machines into your body. And, you know, there's a lot of talk and, you know, there's even there was actually just the other day, which is funny, it was pulled down because it was on the CDC site talking about how 5G 
and uh, COVID mm-hmm. and stuff are all connected, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there's all this conversations that have been going on for a long time on how communications can connect with you and, you know, these tiny little chips and all that. So, I mean, these things are not so conspiracy and so far fetched because a lot of this stuff has been talked about for a while. So, you know, you think about it, you know, with medicines, they were talking about, you know, these chips that could basically go in and find things out in your body and fix things in your body based yep. on little robots, mm-hmm. right? They're, mm-hmm. They're nano robots and technology. So this is all futuristic stuff. And it's very interesting how so much of this is actually starting to really happen. They're already putting chips in people in Switzerland or Sweden. They're testing those things out. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's really going to be a direct to consumer where (laughs) the Internet connects to you. I mean, we're seeing money go away now. Everything is moving away and everything's being connected. We're constantly surveilled. I mean, if you think about what's happening right now with what's going on, we are two things that are going on that is really kind of very fascinating in the world is we're self-censoring ourselves mm-hmm. through the PC movement, right? We're, we're basically, nobody's talking anymore, right? Yep. They don't want to talk because there's all this war going on in between each other. The media is completely dividing us and doing very interesting things if you pay attention. Uh, so we see those things starting to happen. So we're, 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 we're moving into a whole new world, brothers and sisters. This is going to be a very interesting ride. But at the same time, I think there's, this is going to be one of the most exciting times for entrepreneurs ever yeah. that I've ever seen. Yep. I mean, I can't think about, it. there's so many problems that need to be solved now and so many new ways that things are going to have to be done and dealt with. It's just like with me and our company and with Think Experience, we were, our, we're an experience. Uh, our company was all based on creating experiences and that's because we found that you can't sell music anymore. And mm-hmm. what can you sell? You can sell an experience and you can sell the relationship and the lifestyle and the yep. products that go along with that. But music is not sellable. So we were in the experience space. And so now our whole thing is really reinventing what is live going to be like now. And the fact that we can now have this technology where it's not just live streaming, but people need to realize it's live two way streaming. Yes. So I can bring people into the, into the, into our shows. So we just did an experiment uh, where we set up on a sound stage and we had LED video walls, lighting, all of that. But I had them put up 18, uh, 80 inch video monitors and we brought the entire crowd in through Zoom and put it around the band. Wow. So we actually played to our audience. They were all there live and we could interact with them and talk to them and stuff. And it was very interesting experience, right? And then, we're seeing the other option. The other thing that's exciting is really the concept of delivery services. Yes. Because now everybody's getting into delivery service. And so I can now deliver services to them that actually tie to my live stream and kind of create a home experience. So I think there's new models that are basically reinventing the entertainment industry. And for us, we're focused on that. And you can see there's just tons of other whole bunches of problems and situations that need to be dealt with. Uh, so I think the entrepreneurial spirit is going to be a uh, really flying now in a lot of ways for for sure for sure you know i i I do have to to say right now uh both uh, maddie g and i come from an it background so i have no doubt maddie g is vibrating with an amount of questions for you uh because you're probably one of the first guests that we've had that not only comes from the music industry and entertainment industry but actually has some credible um you know technology background and experience so uh i I, (laughs) it's like i can feel maddie from like oh my god i've got so many questions (laughs) (laughs) well i was just curious like related to to your career i was curious about uh, one of the questions i wanted to ask that's specific to you is um did your passion for technology and innovation come before your love of music or was it after or, and and how how did you go about you know learning how to blend them together well you know it's interesting i came from a musical family my, i grew up on a television show called the lawrence welk show I don't know if you remember that. My father was on that show for 15 years. It was early television, so I was around the television scene. Around that, my father was a serial entrepreneur. We had both businesses, lighting businesses, candy businesses. We had 26 donut shops at one time. Uh, and then he oh, also wow. was one of the invent, was one of the inventors of the Wawa pedal. Oh, you know, the famous musical yeah. pedal. My dad started it amplified instruments and then i don't know if you heard of the recording studio sound city Mm -hmm. which dave Mm -hmm. Grohl did a thing well that was my dad's studio so i grew up in sound city and that was originally called the vox sound lab so i've been around business and stuff all my life 
And uh, but I, I and I started out to be an architect and really wasn't in the into the music business. All I did it because my dad was in the business and he always said, you know, do it for fun on the weekends. And, you know, cause I, so I kind of kept playing. 